My name is Earl Senchuk and I'm an artist out of Marquette, Michigan. And years ago I took this photograph of the Marquette Lighthouse in Marquette, Michigan. And I wanted to render that into a relief sculpture. So this is what it looks like. Here's a view of it. Close up. So there were some flaws in the original that I did, so I thought I'm going to redo the whole casting process and everything else. So I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to show you the steps of the way to making the mask for the sculpture and this backing here, plaster backing. This is a, an encasement mold that actually holds the latex mold in place so that when you do the, ca the actual casting, which this is the end result, so, I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to show you over my shoulder all the tricks and details that I use to go from relief sculpture to a casting and all the processes that go on in between. So, without further ado, let's get started. When applying the mold builder, you want to use a brush that's kind of, well, an old one you don't really care too much about. I dip it in water first then dry it off. You dip it in the mold builder and you want a brush that's fairly stiff but still soft that it's not going to degrade any of your detail or anything like that by putting pressure on it. You want to put pressure enough such that you're going to get deep into these cracks. You want a brush that's stiff enough to go deep down into every bit of those cracks as far as you can go. The most important layer is the very first layer. You want it to be ultra thin and ultra thorough as to where you get into all these cracks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, sculpture, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for it so it's nice and cold when I start out. That way it's not going to dry quite so fast and I can uh, lay this layer on really thin and um, really do a good job because the thinner you know, the thinner the layer and the deeper you can go, the better your results are going to be in terms of detail when you get um, make your castings. So this is the critical layer right now. You see the little tiny spots right there and that little fence and stuff. Stairwell is another one. That's going to be a kind of one I got to be really careful with because you got to go deep into every little crack and crevice that you can get into. The second coat goes a little bit easier. Um, you can start building. By the time you get up to 10 coats and stuff like that, you can lay this stuff on pretty good because it filled all those little deep cracks and stuff and so it's um, shallowed out, so to speak. And you can go to a stiffer brush if you want. Put that on uh, to apply the latex. Now I got the clay is nice and cool. I put it in the refrigerator for a while so it's going to take a little longer for this to dry out. Now I'll go back in. It looks like I'm going in kind of heavy in spots but I'm going back in after I've spread it out a little bit and that gives you somewhat of a dry brush and it's going to suck up some of that excess stuff. We're still shooting for a very thin layer even when we go into these other deeper pockets and stuff. I'm also going to want to go, once I get the full area done, I want to go an inch out of the edge to create a gasket like you see here. That's a flange, I guess is what the word would be. So I'm just going to continue doing this and then I'll show you in, in the time lapse. Here's what that finished first layer looks like. It's just starting to dry and you see all around the perimeter I've created a one inch flange. It's going to end up being a little bit of a overhang piece onto my holder platform. Well, that's what the brush looks like when it's done. It gets pretty ratty pretty quick. It's going to be hard to clean now, that's for sure. This is the first layer of Mold Builder after it dries is what six layers look like. You can start to see now that the flange is building up a little bit. This is layer number 15. 
Final layer. Oh, take a little bit of water, get the brush moistened. Now I've used the same brush for the past, um, um, well, um, probably the past 10 uses. And you clean it up each time, but there's a certain way you got to clean it. Now, so the pores are pretty much filled now, so it's going to go rather quickly because we're not dealing with so many uh, deep pits and stuff like that they would have to fill. So everything's been kind of leveled out, so to speak. So these final layers usually go on a little quicker without too much trouble. And so you don't have to worry about absolutely being perfect or painting or anything like that. You just want a thin layer because they're going to accumulate. Next time you go over this thing you might put a little bit more in another spot than you did the last time. So it all balances out anyway. And the way I'm doing the sides now is you fill it in, kind of paint it in a little away from the edge so that you put pressure in so you're not going to create any kind of puddling in that crack down at the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're getting everything you need to, to touch um, that's on the bottom. You got to get it filled and then go a little bit away from the edge so you don't have to go back in there again um, when you do the wider strip. So we just want to get a thin layer. That's all we want. But it's going to have a tendency to puddle in the outside corners like you just see here now by putting it all on in one big layer I can just now I don't have to go so close to the edge and so I'm not going to create a whole lot of puddling or anything like that so a quick layer all the way around and this mask is going to be done and I'll be able to Go into the next step, which is going to be able to uh, create a, a backing plaster encasement mold. And uh, basically what that is, is I'm just going to go over the top. Now here I had a puddle there, and usually a puddle in the corners. So now she's about done. So when this dries, the next thing I'm going to do is um, pour the plaster over the top of this and create an encasement mold so when I peel that away this that mold will hold this mask perfectly in place when it's flipped over. Next up here is going to make an encasement mold. This is going to hold the actual latex mold in place and so I have to pour this thickness of plaster around this perimeter so I gotta block this off with some kind of a containment measure and then you use either you know body powder or baby powder either one will work just fine and sprinkle it on and what this does is it's going to create a barrier or this is called a release agent so that the plaster doesn't stick to the latex so this will free real, real easy so I'm just going to put it on and then take a brush and dust it around. Make sure I got it in all the uh, pores and cracks and everything else. Now I'm ready to do the pour. I've got my plaster of Paris ready and uh, created a box here. I use these, this overlapping method here so that overlaps that way, overlaps that way, and then overlaps that way. So if that way you can make just a few of these pieces here and create any size box you want just by a matter of how where you need to drill your holes to connect them together. And here you, uh, you see I used two screws to uh, connect to this end. But it's so variable that you can create a box any size you need. Now I'm using a, an adhesive back foil covering as much as I can of a one and a half inch wide by three quarter inch wide board that I uh, use this um, three inch adhesive back aluminum tape. It's got a very aggressive uh, glue to it. And you cover one full bottom and slightly over the edge here. And this is the part that's going to go down. And then this is fully covered with the foil as high as you can go up here. And um, now that'll allow me to go to a depth up to that point if I want. But in this case I'm only going to be going 
an inch and a quarter up above. That's as high as I need to go because I know my maximum height in the sculpture is only three quarters of an inch. So I got plenty to cover that. So it's going to actually look just like the former one. And, um, and to connect these together, I pre-drill these one of these holes using this uh, little pilot bit here. I think it's a 764. And then that's a Craig type screw and it's got a broad head to it. So that when you screw it in, it, it pulls it up nice and tight and square. I like those kind of screws. And then they have a square head and I use a, a square drive on uh, the cordless drill. So these boxes go together fairly quick. Now I do a coating on these as well. You see kind of a greasy coating on here. That's the use in cream and you can get that any drugstore because it's um, people with psoriasis use that. It keeps the moisture uh, in your skin but it also keeps moisture um, from contacting here. That plaster is not going to stick to this. Nothing will. Tape, nothing. So anyway, we're ready to pour. have to be done in one time. You can uh, load it uh, more on top. Go mix another batch if you need it. So you don't want to mix too much because um, you're just going to waste plaster or it's going to be very heavy. You only need what you need. So there we go. That's enough to cover everything. I'm right at my mark right there. So I know I'm at the depth I need to be. Now let that set up. Be good to go. Time to take the tape off and uh, remove the framework. The mold. To prepare the mold, I'm going to use baby powder as a release agent. So you sprinkle it on. This keeps the permastone from sticking to the rubber latex. And here you just dust it. Make sure every nook and cranny is well dusted and there's no excess dust sitting in any pocket where it might uh, rob you of detail. Now I just throw the rest of that away. I just want a light dusting. After the dusting, I just spray on a little bit of uh, Bubble Be Gone. Uh, this material right here, and that prevents any bubbles from forming. And they'll all rise to the surface. They miraculously disappear. The Permazone is a kind of a porcelain-like, uh, very hard material. It's kind of like a really hard plaster. And what first do, it's a two to one ratio. So I've got one 
cup and a half of this to three quarters of a cup of water. Put the water in first, then put in, in the permastone. Kind of let it set for a little bit so that um, it's, you'll see the water starting to cause it to uh, moisten around the edges and stuff. So I'm just going to hasten that a little bit. And then we want to mix it so it's nice and smooth. And it doesn't take very long. And then you simply pour it in the mold. From here I'll just level it out, just a little bit, so it's pretty even. Now the next step is to take something that I can use to tap on the bottom. So I'm going to use this here little metal thing, tapping it like so. all around and underneath causes the bubbles to rise to the surface so they're not going to get caught in any deep depression and stuff because that will ruin your detail actually or ruin your whole results of your pour. So now I'm just going to leave that set nice and level until it firms up about a half hour later we'll look at what the results are. Well here's the unveiling Take it out of the encasement mold. Usually they come out pretty easy. There, it came out pretty quick. All right, there we go. Now, let's see what the let's see what the end result is going to be here. There we go. Looks pretty good. Yeah, looks really nice. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Mark that lighthouse. Just gotta clean up the edges and smooth out some spots. Looks good. I like it.